Hi, welcome back. In this segment, I want to talk about modular arithmetic and some basic properties that we should be aware of in the context of cryptography. Okay, let's get started. Uh, we learned the basics of modular arithmetic in the previous segment. Uh, let me quickly recall the, the core idea. We say A is congruent to B, uh, written like this, A congruent to B mod uh, N. Uh, we are to assume N is greater than one, okay? An integer greater than one. Um, we say A is congruent to B if um, A mod N is same as B mod N, okay? What it means is that you take number A and you divide it by N, you get a reminder. If that reminder, let me use this notation for now, the reminder is same as the reminder you get by taking your B and um, dividing it by N, you get some other reminder, right? If these two reminders are, are the same, then we say A and B are congruent with respect to N. For example, let's take A to be 36, right? And um, uh, say B to be, um, let's say B to be uh, 21, right? And uh, N to be uh, 15, okay? So I claim that um, A and B are congruent in this case, meaning 36 is congruent to 21 mod 15. So right, written like this, 36. Some books write three lines like this. So um, they, in this co context, they are same. Uh, two equals or three equals, you should treat them as same. Um, is equal to 21 in mod. Sometimes I put bracket also to make it clear that this is just the mod part. Okay, mod n mod 15. Let's see whether this is true. Okay, what is 36 mod 15? 36 mod 15 is six, right? When you divide 36 by 15, you get a reminder of six. So this is six left-hand side. What about right-hand side? 21 mod 15 is also six. So we say, therefore 31 is congruent to 21 mod 15. All right, that's the basic definition of congruence. So when we say A is congruent to B mod N, what we mean is that A divided by N gives you some reminder. That reminder is same as B divided by N, okay? Then we say A is, A is congruent to B mod N. Okay, and, and note that B need not be smaller than N when I write it in congruence notation. For example, 21 is not smaller than 15, but still we can write it here. But oftentimes we, we, we write the reduced form, right? We, we simplify it. Um, uh, instead of writing 21, we will write six, okay? All right. Um, anyway, but you get the idea of A congruent to B mod N. That's something that we talked about in the previous segment. So what are the basic math properties the, that we can leverage, okay? L let me first summarize some of the important properties. First of all, um, now that you've got the understanding of this, first property is that if A is congruent to say some number A prime uh, mod N, okay? Um, and uh, B, B is congruent to say some other number uh, mod N, okay? Say B is congruent to B prime mod N. Actually, A plus B is congruent to uh, A prime mod B prime, okay? That's a nice property. Integer addition rules are satisfied. So you may ask, what is the big deal about it? I'll explain with an example, the benefit of this rule. Um, suppose your goal is to add two big numbers, okay? What you can do is, instead of adding the two big numbers, you can reduce the number first to mod n, and then add the results, and they are the same, okay? Let me explain why first. I'll leave this as an exercise for you to prove that, that um, if A is congruent to A, A prime mod n, B is congruent to B prime mod n, then A plus B is congruent to A prime plus B prime mod n. That's an interesting exercise. Simple exercise, you should be able to do it. Okay, just using the rules of division, okay? And now what is the benefit of this rule? Let's say um, you need to add uh, two numbers, say A is say 38, okay? And B is um, 27. Okay, and you wanted to add these two numbers in mod, uh, um, say mod five, okay? 
how can you do that one possibility is you can add a plus b uh, which will be 50 plus uh, 15 65 and then you divide it by 5 and take the reminder which will be zero okay but i'll tell you much more a uh, simple technique first you can reduce a by uh, mod 5 what is mod a uh, what is a mod 5 a mod 5 let, let us take this example over the side okay what is a mod 5 a is 38 right a will be congruent to um, 38 mod 5 is 3 we know that in mod 5 this is nice because 38 is congruent to 3 mod 5 essentially that's what you're saying which is which satisfies this definition because uh, 38 mod 5 is same as 3 mod 5 which is equal to of course 3 mod 5 so this satis this definition is satisfied what about b uh, b is congruent to 2 mod 5 so we have reduced our a's and b's from a large number to really small numbers okay all right now because of this this definition right if a is congruent to a prime mod n b is congruent to b prime mod n a plus b will be congruent to a prime plus b prime so what is a uh, a plus b now a plus b is nothing but uh, 5 mod 5 okay 5 mod 5 okay which is nice which is true okay all right so what is our goal suppose our goal is to find uh, um, the reminder of a plus b mod n okay what are we saying it's enough to compute a prime plus b prime mod n right which means uh, what is a, pl a plus b? We, we learned that a plus b is same as 5 mod 5, okay? Which means we have to compute 5. This a plus b is same as 5 mod 5. So I'll write it here in terms of example, 5 mod 5. And we have to compute one more mod of this mod 5, which is clearly, the first part is clearly 0. 5 mod 5 is 0, so 0 mod 5 is 0. Okay, so as we can see, b, um, first reduce the numbers and then we computed modulus because of this this interesting additional property if you want to add a plus b you could first reduce a by a prime b by b prime and add them that, that's the the rule that i'm applying here to show to you addition may be somewhat simple but the more power is in multiplication let me show you that okay this is nice you can multiply uh, two numbers first reduce the numbers and then multiply you'll get the same answer let's try directly on a python program Again, this is an exercise for you to prove if A is congruent to A mod N, B is congruent to B mod N, prove that A prime, A times B is same as A prime times B prime mod N, okay. Let's take simple uh, demo using Python, okay. So let's take our A to be, for example, I'm taking the book of uh, Professor Katz and he has some A's and B's that I will leverage. Um, you can try on any other A's and B's as well, 9028, uh, B to B, uh, say 190301 okay suppose the goal is to compute um, a times b uh, mod n in, in in python mod means percentage so this notation percentage 100 okay what is that value it's 28 okay let's first reduce a and b and compute that okay let's compute a percentage 100 times b percentage 100 okay of course, for the whole thing, you need to reduce again because the product may go outside the 100. As I discussed on the whiteboard, we need to compute that, which get, you get 28 again. So you can see here, um, multiplying the two numbers first and then um, computing the reminder, the L means along, okay? Um, you get the answer 28, okay? Uh, but it's it's a long uh, work to compute these two multiplications. It's a lot of work to compute multiplication of two numbers, long numbers, big numbers. Um, what we can do is first reduce the numbers uh, using the respective modulus and then uh, compute the product. That's what I did. A mod 100 is clear, which is 28. And B mod 100 is just one. Um, therefore, the answer is 28. In this particular example, this, this extra 100 is useless, but in general, you need to have modulus again. All right, so that's basically it. That, that what we have learned today is that um, we can actually um, multiply two numbers very efficiently. First, reduce the numbers to the congruence, and then apply the fact that whenever A is congruent to B mod N, the reminder of, uh, as you can see here, A is congruent to B mod N means A mod N reminder is same as B mod N, okay? That's basically what we did. And as I have shown to you, A prime, B prime, uh, 
is smaller because we first applied a mod n to get a prime, a b mod n to get b prime. So these two numbers are much smaller than these two numbers multiplied. Okay, and that's the reason why our, our, our answer is so, so quick to compute when we first reduce the modulus. Okay, what about division? A division is a bit of a pain. Um, you can't get um, division um, in this fashion, meaning suppose um, you have um, two numbers, say A times B, turned out to be equal to say um, uh, C times B, okay, in mod N. You can't divide always, okay? There are some cases where you can and some cases you can't. And the next segment, I will explain that, that in more detail. Okay, so somebody's, somebody's giving you this. Uh, um, can you claim that A must be equal to C? Uh, the answer is no in general, okay? You can't divide both sides by B and say A must be congruent to C mod N. For example, take um, the number again from, from the nice book of uh, Professor Cuts. Uh, take N to be, um, for example, 24. Okay, you have your um, A to be uh, say three and B to be um, say A equal to three and B to be two. Three times two is congruent to um, 15 times two. 15 times two is, is 30 uh, mod uh, 24, okay? We know this is true, right? Because three times two is six, six mod 24 is six, okay? What about 15 times two? 15 times two is 30, 30 mod 24 is also six. So this congruence is true, okay? But we can't divide two both sides because if you divide two on both sides, you get three. Three equal to 15 mod uh, 24 is wrong because three mod 24 is three, 15 mod 24 is 15. So three cannot be equal to two, 15 mod 24, okay? So there are cases where this division doesn't work. You can't divide both sides by the common uh, term. Okay, like in regular math. Okay, modular arithmetic violates the property. Uh, in the next segment, I will explain some additional relationship between um, B and DN that makes this possible that you can divide. Okay, that's all. Thank you very much for your attention.